Hey guys, what's up? My name is Galactor, and in this video I want to show you how you can easily create gated gigs within Serum. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Now before showing you any of the presets, let's have a listen to what it sounds like. So for this kick, I used a few different layers and I created a specific serum preset for each and every layer. And I like to do this simply because it gives you more control over the sound of each and every layer. Um, and I started off with the main punch and I said, it's actually quite an easy preset. It's, it's nothing crazy going on. Um, I set a sine wave to oscillator A lowered it by one octave and it's supposed to give a little bit of the lower body to the kick like a bit of the oomph sound if you know what i mean and if i just turn on this one this is what the punch sounds like and then oscillator b is set to a saw wave with a unison of three and this is something that i like to do in in some cases like add two three maybe four voices with a little bit of detune and blend and that can open up your sound and if you're then going to distort it the distortion actually has a little bit more of information to get that distortion effect, if you know what I mean. So you can get fuller sounding punches. Um, now don't overdo this because you don't want to super saw as a punch, of course, um, but a little bit like three, four um, voices in the unison could really work well. And this one is also lowered by one octave and it sounds like this. So as you can hear, it's a little bit wider, a little bit more information on the sides. And together with oscillator A, it sounds like this. Now for the processing within Serum itself, there's not so much going on. All I did was cutting out the tail with envelope one, so I would only hear the punch. And that's simply just a preference thing for me. When I'm working on a punch, I don't want to hear the tail, so that's why I cut, it out, cut this out. And envelope two and three are controlling the master tune. Envelope two is a little bit of a sharper um, and shorter envelope. and it's coming from a higher pitch and envelope three is a little bit more subtle and longer but it's coming from a lower pitch um, and then i simply blend it in with the output sliders over here so you have a little bit more control over that pitch drop effect for the fx there's also not so much going on all that i did was adding a little bit of hyper and dimension i um, actually see now that i added a unison of seven which is quite a lot even though the mix is quite low um, but again, it's the same as adding some unison over here in your oscillators. It can give the distortion a little bit more information, which opens up the punch and can get you a fuller sound. But you have to be subtle with it. Don't overdo it, but it can be nice for some punches. Um, so I would recommend you to try that out. And then apply the EQ. Make sure you do that also before distortion so that these EQ points run through the distortion. So you get a little bit of a tonal boost effect and um i already had a little bit of a idea of how my kick should sound like in my head and i just had to pick the right frequencies for that to, to boost and now of course you don't always need to have an idea in your head uh, when you start making a kick but you just have to find the sweet spots of the frequencies that sound good uh, when you run it through the distortion and talking about the distortion um i simply set it to stunbox because i always just scroll through these um distortion modes then i applied a filter to cut out some of the highs pre-filter um because it was a little bit too sharp for my opinion and then i simply cranked up all the drive and the, the mix all the way and in the end there's just multiband compression to uh, squeeze everything a little bit together and then there's one more thing that i almost forgot to mention which is the filter that i applied i always make sure that i turn on a and b so the both oscillators run through the filter and then I just scroll through the flanges mode. For me personally, these give the best results in most cases. Um, and then it's all fi about finding the sweet spot again by uh, adjusting the cutoff, the resonance and the drive. Same with, uh, with the EQ points in here and the filter and the distortion. It's all about finding that sweet spot that sounds good for your kick. The next layer that I created was the first tail. And what I did is simply copying the punch layer and adding reverb and adjusting envelope one and that's it um, i adjusted envelope one by increasing the attack a little bit so the the punch is a little bit less sharp now and increasing the hold so there's more information for the reverb to be applied on 
Um, yeah, and then I have a hall reverb because for me personally, I think that the hall reverbs from Serum work better than the blade reverbs, at least for gated kicks. Uh, I make sure to leave the low cut all the way down because you want those lows in there. A uh, little bit of high cut because it was a little bit too sharp for me. And then I play around with the spin, the spin depth and the mix. And then it sounds like this. And you get a little bit of that deep reverb tail that you're looking for. Next layer is the tail two. And all I did was changing the spin, the spin depth and the mix here. And it's only a very slight difference compared to the first tail. But I'll show you later on why exactly I did that. But this is what it sounds like now. So the next layer that I created was an extra punch because I was listening to what I had so far with the main punch and the two tails that I just created. And it really lacked something. Um, so I kind of wanted to go for a bit of a higher pitched and very sharp punch to layer it underneath the main one. And what I did was setting oscillator A to wave 0 0.5. Now, this is a waveform that doesn't come with Serum. I installed it from an external pack. And let me quickly show you which pack that is. It's from Adam Tsabo. He is the creator of Viper. And if you go to his website and to the product page of Viper, you can scroll down all the way. And then you'll find this section over here, which is called the Virus TI Wavetables. And you can just download these for free. You don't need an account. You don't need um, to buy Viper whatsoever. You can just download these and then make sure you set it up into your directory so that you can, from Serum so that you can find them in here. And I personally like to use these because for me, they work really well for punches and kicks in general. So I was just scrolling through that and uh, I found that this was a very nice sound. I did lower it by two octaves, and so did I do with oscillator B that I left on the saw wave. I turned down the volume all the way, but I set the warp mode from oscillator A to FM from B, which basically means that oscillator A is taking information from oscillator B to shape its own sound. Um, and then I created this envelope and envelope 2 for the pitch uh, on the master tune, just a little bit like that nice high pitch sound. Um, then there is an LFO on the level here, so I cut out the tail from this. Um, and then in the effects section, I again applied some EQ. It's, I did the same as with the main punch. I just applied EQ before the distortion to find a nice sweet spot for a resonating sound that is like cutting through for this punch. And I added a little bit of highs because it was a little bit too muddy in my opinion. And then I add a tube distortion again with a pre-filter to cut out some of those highs because of course it will be very sharp if you boost it like this over here. And then crank up the drive and the mix. Multiband compression to glue everything together. And the reverb over here is just for the reverb tail that you'll see later on. And then you, your, um, your punch will sound something like this. Now the next layer is the reverb tail. And I simply duplicated this layer because I thought I would do something more special with the reverb tail, but I ended up not changing anything at all. Um, so this is exactly the same preset as the extra punch. And I just cut out the punch from this sample in the playlist, so I didn't do anything different in here. And then we're already at the last layer that I created. And I called this one a club kick, which I'm aware of. It, it is not sound... It is not a club kick, it doesn't really sound like it. Um, but I just wanted a bit more of a lower, almost sub layer for the punch to give it a little bit of a, more of a body. Um, and I just set the oscillator A to a sine wave, lowered it by one octave, and then created this envelope two on the master tune, she have a slight pitch drop effect. And LFO one is on the volume of the oscillator so that I would cut out the punch and have no tail. Um, and then a little bit of distortion, and that's it actually, and then it sounds like this. So once I had all the layers, I made sure to render them out and put them into my playlist. I had to clean it up a little bit because as you can see with the punch, for example, there was like this small tail over here that I don't need, so I had to cut that away manually. Same for the tail one and tail two, they had small parts of the punch still in there, so you just have to cut that away manually. And I absolutely love using these new sliders that we have in FL Studio 21. 
It allows you to be so much more precise compared to the de-clicking modes that we used to have. Um, and it's way easier than creating automation clips on the volume, for example, for every layer. I, so I absolutely love using those to blend in um, the punch and the tail very precisely. Um, yeah, so I had to clean that up a little bit. And as I mentioned before, that tail one is very similar to tail two. All I did with tail two was hovering my mouse above it, holding shift and then scrolling through it with my mouse button. This allows you to just um, take a part of the sample that's, that sounds nice together with tail one. And just because I made that slight difference, the waveform looks slightly different. And if you just scroll through it, then you'll find a sweet spot that sounds good and blends in well. Um, yeah, th there's no guidance for that. You just have to try it out and, and see what, what suits your kick. So next up, I routed everything through a mixer channel. But before showing you the processing that I applied, let's have a listen to the kick without any processing. And as you can hear, it sounds like a gated kick and it sounds all right, but it doesn't sound good yet. It really, really needs more power. So in order to do that, I started out with the punch, the main one, and I created this boost over here. And this is just the resonance frequency that I found that sounded nice. And then you, it just adds a little bit more character. And then we have a Pro L2 limiter to prevent it from clipping. Tail one and tail two have no processing at all. And then the extra punch has the same trick as I applied at the main punch. Also at the same frequency to make sure that it blends in well with the main punch. And this also gives you that tonal feeling to it to give a little bit more resonance and make it a bit more powerful. The reverb tail doesn't have any processing and the club kick has a low cut. So then the last thing I did was routing all of these layers through the kick bus over here, where I started off with an equalizer and I did a low cut on 200 hertz on the sides to make sure that the bass will be mono. So you basically cut out all the bass information on the sides uh, from the stereo spectrum. And I boosted some of the mids to make sure that the punch would cut through again. Then some slight compression, very, very subtly, but in bus style with a fast attack and fast release. And that makes sure that you blend everything in, um, together well. It's almost like uh, the glue compressor. Then we have an inflator or actually the inflator preset for patcher from Frank Paul to uh, make sure everything uh, sounds nice and powerful. And last but not least, an ozone 10. And for me, this one is quite crucial because it allows me to shape the sound a little bit better in the end. I start off, started off with another equalizer where I reduced some of the highs because it was a little bit too bright for me, then increased the lows because it could really use some more bass and a peak around the same frequencies uh, for the punch again to make sure that's really cutting through. And if you're using this plugin by default, I think it always sets itself at analog, but this for me can create some yeah, some annoying clicky and poppy sounds and also reduce the dynamics. So I always make sure to set this to digital. Uh, next thing we have is an imager to make sure that the, the bass was mono again. And because we used a lot of unison before with the punch and the tails, um, I even created another band and made it a little bit more centered as well because it was a little bit too much, too wide for me still. So I, I simply want to um, bring it a little bit more to the center again. Then we have an impact, which you can basically see as a multi-band transient shaper. And this band over here is where the main punches are. So I increased that a little bit so they cut through really well. And I slightly reduced the transients on the base um, because it was a little bit too much for me, but it's just a slight, very slight difference. And then I finished it off what by a maximizer um, to introduce a little bit of soft clipping, which could be nice on some kicks. It, it makes it a little bit more crunchy again and uh, make sure it's not clipping. So that's pretty much it. And if you follow that closely, you should end up with a kick that sounds like this.
Now, as always, you can download the template for free with the link in the description below. Of course, it comes with FLP, but also all the presets for Serum and the, um, the sample. So the recorded layers that I have in here, and it allows you to make your own gated kicks and just tweak it around, play with it and see what, uh, what crazy kicks you can make out of it. And then I want to say thank you for watching. I hope you found this tutorial useful and that you're going to download this template. And if you do so, um, don't hesitate to send me your results of kicks that you made with this template because I'm very curious to see what you guys can make out of this. If you like this, please like this video and also subscribe to my channel because it would help me a lot to make better uh, content for you guys. And then I hope to see you in the next video.